In this video, I'm gonna go over how to add, adjust, and animate basic effects in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, so the type of effects that we're gonna start with are the native motion and opacity effects found in effect controls. If you don't see effect controls, just go up to window and then down to effect controls right here. And then just make sure you're clicked on the clip that you want to affect because these settings are attached to whatever clip you are clicked on. And if we look up here, we can change our position. So if you click here and slide to the right or left, you can move your clip left and right. This will move it up and down. And this little back arrow thing for any of these will reset it to its original position. Next, we can change scale. So if we click on this one, it'll make it more zoomed in or bigger or smaller or more zoomed out. Then we can also rotate it right here. And if we click back on motion up here, we can do any of those things. So I can move my clip and I can go to the edge here and expand it out, zoom it in. And if I go to the outside, I can rotate it as well. And all of those things are attached to this, which is the anchor point. So if I change the anchor point, then I go and rotate again, it's gonna rotate around that anchor point. Same with scaling and positioning all the same. So I'm gonna reset, 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 and reset. Down here we have opacity. So if I crank that down, you'll see it becomes more see-through and it's gonna see through to whatever is underneath. So if there's nothing underneath, it's gonna see through to black. Now, if I have this clip underneath, right now it's hidden. If I unhide it, now we'll see the clip that's underneath it. So if I bring this one back up, we'll see that that's fading into the original clip. And if I bring it down, it's gonna see through to the clip underneath. Blend mode is just kind of like an opacity trick and there's a whole bunch of them in here. So we can go to multiply and that'll have, you know, this kind of look to it. So it'll keep kind of the darks and get rid of the light spots. If we go to screen, it's gonna be the opposite. So it keeps the lights. You know, each of them has kind of a different look to it. Let's just go linear light. And so you can create some kind of cool effects if you use some blend modes. Having said that, probably the most common use for blend modes is in combination with overlay effects. So I have a bunch of them down here from a company called Savage Effects. I'll have a link in the description below for their stuff. I have film scratch, like fire, particles, rain, smoke, VHS stuff. So all you do is you, I'm going to go to fire here. You just double click on the one that you want. It'll appear up here. And then just drag in the video piece right here over top. I mean, if there was audio, you could drag that in as well. But for these ones, it's just video. And then it'll appear like this over top of your footage. Then just click on the clip, go back to effect controls and change your blend mode. So I'm gonna change blend mode to screen in this case. Cause if I pick multiply, remember, it's just gonna see through the fire cause it's keeping the dark spots. So if I go down here to screen, now it's gonna get rid of the other stuff. And then like we learned before, you can now just scale and position, rotate everything here. So I'm gonna, you know, scale it down and maybe, you know, put it over here on top of this building. So now when we watch this, it's gonna look like that building is on fire. It just so happens that it tracks perfectly good on top of this for this clip. But most of the time you'd probably have to use like keyframes to have it move along with the building. So you can add more to it if you want. So let's just see another one here. Let's go smoke that goes well with it. So maybe I'll try smoke two here. So that looks pretty good. Just drag it in over top and then click on it. Go back to effect controls and change it. It'll be screen in this case again. And so you just push play and now I got us kind of smoke in the foreground there. And then maybe even want to add like uh, this VHS thing to make it look old. So I'll go to VHS four, maybe here, these scratches, same thing, drag just that one on top, click on it, go back, change your blend mode to screen. And there you go. Now we got kind of this old VHS looking building on fire. But there's also one more thing that we can do under opacity as well, which is create a mask. So these three things right here, one's an ellipse mask, One's a four point polygon mask and the other one's a free draw mask. So whatever clip you're clicked on. So I'm going to click on this San Francisco one just to show you the bottom one. If you click on the mask, it's going to apply it to the clip. But notice we can't actually see anything. We see this circle, but nothing's happening because if I click this eyeball on the top one, I've applied that mask to this bottom layer, which was covered up by the buildings one. So I'm just going to click on mask here and delete it and I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked on my top layer. Now, when I go over to the mask and click on it, it's gonna apply that mask, which means it's only gonna keep that section and the rest is gonna be gone, which means we see through to the bottom image. By holding shift and going to the edge, we can scale it up. If you see the hand, you, that means you can move it. 
If you go to any of these spots, you can stretch it out like any of these blocks. This little handle right here changes the feather on the edge. And you can also add new spots by going to this little pen and the plus to create other spots that you can drag out and reshape if you want. And you can also go to the edge here and rotate it. And all those things are all over here as well. So you can change the feather right here. You can change the opacity of just what's in the mask right here. You can expand the mask by making it bigger and smaller, just like that. And you can even invert it so that you're kind of punching a hole through. And now we see everything that's around and we only see through to the bottom layer right through this middle mask part. And then obviously you can see we can still apply blend modes and stuff right here. Okay, so the last of the basic effects that you'll find over here in effect controls is time remapping or speed. But I think if you're just starting out, the better way to change the speed of a clip is to actually go to the clip on your timeline, right click, and then go into this thing right here, speed slash duration. That's gonna open up this dialog box, which allows us to put things in slow-mo, fast forward, or even reverse it right here. So I'm just gonna cancel. So this is our original clip here, this car just driving forward. So if I right click and go into speed duration, the obvious one here is you just click on this for reverse speed. I'm gonna click okay. And now we'll see the car will obviously go backwards. If we right click again and go into speed duration, I'm gonna uncheck that now. Under speed, you can change this. So anything less than 100% is gonna be slow-mo and the lower the number, the slower it's gonna go. And the higher the number, the faster it's gonna go. So I'm just gonna start with 50%. And I'm not gonna talk about this thing here just yet, but I want you to pay attention to what happens in the timeline, because we're making it twice as slow, so the clip should be twice as long. But I have a clip in the way right here, so it's gonna block it. So I'm gonna click OK there, and you're gonna see that it, it wanted to go twice as long, but this clip blocked it. So now when we watch it, it's gonna be slow-mo, but it's not gonna quite get through the clip because boom, it's gonna get cut off by this other one. So I'm just gonna go Control Z to undo. And then I'm gonna go back in, right click, speed duration, and I'm going to click this instead. So I'm gonna put it back to 50%, but I'm gonna click Ripple Edit Shifting Trailing Clips and click on that box. I'm gonna uncheck reverse speed again, and I'm gonna click OK. Now you're gonna see that, yes, it made it twice as slow, but it made it twice as long and it bumped the other clips down the timeline to make space for it. So now if we watch it, it's gonna be slow-mo, but it's gonna make it through the whole clip because it just bumped everything else out of the way. If I right click and go speed duration and change this to let's say 200%, so that'll be twice as fast as the original one, it should be twice as short. And if I keep ripple edit checked, it's gonna move this one back with it as well. So I'm gonna click okay. And there you go, you're gonna see it's gonna be twice as fast and it was twice as short, boom. If you wanna know more about opacity effects, such as the ones from Savage, masking, or change of speed effects, make sure to check the links in the description below. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to animate your effects, which you can do to anything that appears in here in effect controls, as long as it has this little toggle animation clock beside it. So to animate anything, the first thing you gotta do is make sure you're selected on the right clip. So I actually wanna animate this rally clip and not the running one. So I'm gonna move my blue line over and then I'm gonna click on the clip that I want to animate. So when I was clicked on running, you can see that running was selected here. When I click on rally, rally is selected there. And then you wanna put your blue line where you want the animation to start. So I'm gonna start it right near the start of this clip. And then I'm just gonna go over here and let's just say it's for position. You wanna click on the toggle animation clock thing for the thing you want to animate. So I'm gonna go position, and you can animate multiple things for the same clip. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that one. It's gonna put a keyframe right here. You can kind of see, you can see this little diamond thing. I'm just gonna slide it back into place. When this blue line is hovering exactly at the point that the keyframe is, you're gonna see a blue dot right here. But if this line is away, you're gonna see it's gonna turn gray. So once we put the first keyframe in, that means that that's where the animation is gonna start. You might wanna do this too. I'm gonna expand this out. So I'm gonna slide this over and then click to the edge here and slide this out. You can also zoom in by sliding this little like circle thing here to zoom in closer. And then all we wanna do is put this blue line where we want the animation to end. So you can do it up here or you can slide it like see as I slide it here or up here, they're both moving at the same time. So I'm just gonna make sure that I go to about there and then I'm gonna put another keyframe. So clicking right here this time, not back on the clock. 
So I'm going to click right there to add that keyframe. And this is where it's going to end. And where I want this one to end is right perfectly in position. And then I'm going to click on this little triangle thing right here. You can see that if you get this little like arrow thing back and forth, that just means you don't have enough space. So I actually have to slide this back a little bit. So this little triangle, this will move me from one keyframe to the next. So this will move me a keyframe forward, like to the next one, and this will move me to the previous one. So I want to go to the first one now, and this is where I'm going to mess with some of these numbers. So this will move it left and right, and this one will move it up and down. And you can see that when I'm selected on motion, like I was earlier in the video, we can also go in here and move it as we want. So I'm just going to start this by having it off the frame like that. And you can see these red like dotted lines help me to move it. So it's exactly off the frame right there. But if I click forward to the next one, now this is fully in place. So if we watch now, it's going to slide from being off to sliding right into place. And then the car is going to come in, right? So it's going to go from one keyframe. So this one where it was off and it's going to slide to the end, which is this keyframe where it's full frame again. And just so you know, every keyframe that we add in is initially set as a linear keyframe. So if I click on this and then right click, you can see that it's linear. And that just means that it behaves at a constant rate. So if I look at this clip that's zooming in, it's traveling in at the same speed the whole way until it's done. But we can change that by right clicking. And you can pick one of these other presets here to change its behavior. Or you can do this little drop down here and if you click on any of the keyframes, so you turn any of them blue like this, you'll get these handles. And then I usually start on the right side here and I click and you can drag this one down and kind of flatten it out a little bit. And that'll make this mountain over here. And then I can just take this one, drag it down and maybe even move it over a bit like that. And all this means is that whenever you have a high mountain, that's when it's traveling fast and then it'll slowly kind of go into place and then stop. When it's, it's even like this, it means it's constant and stopped. So it's stopped, then it goes fast, and then it comes in slowly. So now when we watch this, you're going to see it come in really fast, and then it's going to slowly ease into place. Okay, so we watch fast, and then it kind of drifts into place. So anytime you can manipulate your keyframes like this to change it from linear to something else, will make your animations look a lot more smooth. The next type of effects that I'm going to tell you about are the drag and drop in program effects that come with Premiere Pro. If you don't see your effects over here like this, then just go to window and then click on effects right here. Now, if we look in effects, we can see that there's audio effects and there's video effects. Now, I'm not going to explain every single one of these effects. I'm just going to explain a couple of them and then you can apply what you've learned to any of the other effects that you find in here. So I'm going to start in here under blur and sharpen. So you just click that down and I'm going to drag in Gaussian blur right here. So if I click on it, all I have to do is drag it to the clip that I want it to be applied to. And you can see nothing happens. A lot of the times nothing is going to happen because we have to go back over to our effect controls again. And then now we can see that Gaussian blur has been added to our effects over here. And we can adjust it the same way we did anything else. So if we see under blurriness, I can now crank up the blurriness. And there you go, Gaussian blur has been applied to this clip. But if we remember, we can also do this as an animation. So I can slide this over, click on toggle animation, maybe go to the start of the clip and add a keyframe right here then click on this arrow to go to that second one and then turn the blur down. So we can actually kind of use it as a transition to start the clip blurry and then it'll slowly transition into a clip that is in focus. The closer that we make these keyframes, I didn't tell you this before, but the closer we bring these together, the quicker the animation is going to happen and the further they are apart, the slower it's going to be. So I can move that there and then just make this a much quicker transition. If you notice at the very start, if we go back to this one where it was at 82 and I crank it up even more, you can see that some of the edge is kind of messed up here. So that's what this is, repeat edge pixels. So I can click on that and that'll fix some of that up. And then blur dimensions, it just says which direction it wants to be. So right now it's horizontal and vertical. I can switch it to horizontal. I can switch it to vertical or I can put it back to horizontal and vertical. So you can see that this effect here, Gaussian blur, is pretty simple and straightforward. There's only really one main slider 
and then just a couple other things that you can adjust as well. If you ever wanna see like a before and after of what your effect is and then what it was before, just click on this effects next to it. So that's without the effect and that's with it. And if you ever wanna get rid of an effect that you've added in, just click on it and then hit backspace to get rid of it. All right, so now let's take a look at an effect that's a little bit more complicated. So if I go under color correction and drag in Lumetri color, that's like a common color correcting and grading effect. You can see that there is a whole bunch of little drop downs here. So every single one of these has their own like sliders and adjustments that you can do. So for example, up here under basic correction, I can adjust the color temperature of my clip. I can change the tint, you know, the exposure. There's a ton of things in here. In fact, if I close video effects, Lumetri Color has its own tab over here that allows you to see those things. So everything I just adjusted over here, temperature minus 44, you can see that it's over here. And over here, you can see that it's actually a lot better to use. So now I can actually see what I'm doing in terms of the color, like I can see the blue and the orange. Uh, if we go to creative, there's also in here, look, you can go down here and pick, I've added a bunch of other LUTs in here, so you can pick a LUT to create like a grading effect on your footage. So I'm just gonna put that back to none. So yeah, you can go through here and change a whole bunch of things. The, the vibrance, you can make it black and white. So there's a whole bunch of things in here that's way more complicated, even though it looks, if we get rid of this and go back to effects, it looks like it's just one little thing here, Lumetri color and you know Gaussian blur was one little thing here. Some of them are way more complex than others. If you wanna know more about getting and applying LUTs to your footage, like this Cinematic 4 LUT from Savage, I'll just turn it off so that's what the clip was before and that's what it looks like with the LUT applied. Then just make sure to check out the links in the description below. On a side note, if you've applied effects, like let's say this Lumetri Color Image Grade and down here I've added Edge Feather, if you've applied effects to a clip and now you have another clip or other clips in your sequence that you want to apply those exact same effects to, all you have to do is one of three things actually. One would be, I'm just gonna close this down. You can click on one of your effects, then hold control or command on a Mac and then click on the other one so they're both selected. Then just go edit, copy, and then go over to the other one here and just go edit and paste and that'll apply those exact same effects on to the next clip. You can also click on your clip and then go up to edit and just copy the entire thing. Now, just know that right now that's gonna copy everything in here. So for example, if I scaled this clip up and then I clicked on this and went to edit and copy, if I go over to this other clip now and go edit, now I'm gonna go paste attributes but you have a choice here. So I want to click this box because I want to apply the Lumetri Color and the Edge Feather, but I actually don't want the motion. So I can unclick that because I don't want this one to be zoomed in. So if you did want it to be zoomed into, then click that. Otherwise, unclick the ones that you don't need and then just click OK. That'll also now apply that effect to this one. But as you can see, it didn't apply the zoom in. So I'm going to go back here and just reset that one as well. The third and probably best way to apply effects to multiple clips is to use adjustment layers. And to do that, you're gonna have to go over to your project panel. You might have to slide this thing, like click on this dark line and slide it over. So you can see this thing right here, new item, click on that, select adjustment layer. When this panel opens up, just click okay. And an adjustment layer is gonna pop into your clips over here. Then just click on it and drag it above the footage that you want to be impacted by that adjustment layer. I'm just gonna slide this over and then stretch this out so it spans both clips because I want this adjustment layer for both of these clips. Okay, so now whatever I drag onto the adjustment layer is gonna impact everything underneath it. So I'm gonna go over to crop, drag that on the adjustment layer this time, not on the clips, slide down here, and maybe I'll just go off the top 12 and off the bottom 12 to kind of create that kind of wide screen effect. And you can see that on rally now, there's the crop on the top and the bottom and on running because the adjustment layer is impacting both of these two clips. But you can still go in and adjust these uniquely if you want as well. So maybe on this running clip, you wanna go in and scale it up. That will not be scaled up for rally, they're separate. You know, Maybe you wanna move this down, like kind of reframe it. So you can go like that. You can also take like Lumetri and put it on just running. 
So if you wanted just that running clip to maybe be like, you know, blue and not the rally clip, you can impact them separately like that. And you can also drag a clip above the adjustment layer if you don't want it to be impacted as well. So now rally will not have the crop. And if we play it, then once it gets to right here, now running will because it's underneath the adjustment layer. You can actually slice the adjustment layer into pieces if you want to, to have multiple ones. So I'm gonna use the razor tool over here to just slice right where my cut is, and I'll move this rally one back underneath. So now I'm, whatever I apply to this adjustment layer is gonna be separate for whatever happens here. So if I put Gaussian blur on this one and then go down here and slide it up, you're gonna see that it did nothing to this clip because this one is, the running clip is under this adjustment layer and I only put Gaussian blur on this one. So if I go over here, you're gonna see that now Gaussian blur is messing with this clip, but not this one because it's two separate adjustment layers now. And the reason why you're seeing Gaussian blur also blurring the crop is because it's underneath right here. So if I took Gaussian blur and dragged it above crop in my effects, now it's not gonna impact it. So the order that you place things in here definitely matters. As far as audio effects go, everything is exactly the same as what I just explained for video effects. Some of the most common ones in here would be in noise reduction. So denoise, if you have like static noise in the background or whatever, so that would be a good one to use to, to get rid of that. Another one that I use for all of my videos is under here and filter and EQ. I use a parametric equalizer on all of my clips that I've recorded for these tutorials. And then kind of a fun one to use is under time and pitch. You can use pitch shifter. And that's just one that you can use to change people's voice to be like high pitched chipmunks or like low and scary. And that's it. That's all I got for basic effects in Premiere Pro. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.